what have what have you seen even at MSNBC um, and how they diversify? You know, what are there any programs or things that you've seen that are working? It's a challenge for um, large institutions, generally speaking. It doesn't matter what walk of you know professionalism they're in, media, politics, business. It doesn't matter because they're now having to confront real time every day the um, churning inside of their organizations by their members or their employees or their board uh, to do better and be better at expanding the ranks of opportunity for um, black and brown men and women uh, in that particular sector. Media, which is often sort of the watchdog of these things, um, has been caught flat-footed countless times of preaching and castigating and judging others while at the same time ignoring their own um, racist uh, tendencies, uh, their misogynistic tendencies, uh, et cetera. So uh, this is a whole new space for a lot of a lot of. Uh, businesses and particularly in the media space where they are so front faced so forward faced in in this in this area where they're projecting image right they're reflecting imagery um, of the communities that they're covering and to the extent that when people see them on air uh, in the news in entertainment uh, and they don't see themselves reflected in that, that is, that's where this awakening really comes home. So, you know, whether it's a DEI program, diversity, um, equity and inclusion program, uh, or some form of that, they're making these steps and taking these steps to, to be more forward facing in projecting to the community, individuals who look like them have their lived experience, um, and it can speak in the moment to what's really going on in a way of authenticity. Just this week in the unfolding story around p police brutality, you know, watching Black correspondents um, emotionally deal with that on air is, is I think, a, a real reflection of the angst and the pain that's going on in the community. So you, you see that authentic moment. Um, and I, I think the more we're able to reflect that authenticity in our media, um, the more we engage people to really consider the impact these stories are having on their lives. It's not just others. It's not just them. It's not just that neighborhood. But it's something that I realize could happen to me. Um, and if it, if it doesn't happen to me, I still should be concerned about it. That's right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, and truly, uh, you could see the emotion um, as it was that was covered. Um, so so we have students who are looking to go into the field. Uh, we don't want them to be discouraged. Right. What kind, of, what kind of we want them to be encouraged, like they should belong there. You're, you belong there uh, to tell the stories of the community. What advice would you give them? Well, that's the first you you just gave the most important piece of that advice, um, which is you belong there. This is your story as much as anybody else's. You you have as much say in how it's covered uh, and how uh, the editorial narrative is determined. Um, no longer can we just sit idly by and allow um, newspapers, social media, uh, uh, cable, network, television, uh, edi editorialize or, or create opinion around our story. CRT is a very good example of that. Uh, as I said recently um, to Nicole Hannah-Jones uh, on my podcast, I asked her the question, I said, why is it now that when Black people start telling their story, white folks get so upset? And the answer to that question is, the history is painful because it's honest and because it's real. And who, if you're not as, as a new storyteller, uh, as a journalist, as a editor, as a writer, as an anchor, as a talking head, as we're called in the business for those who commentate and, and give analysis, 
Um, if you're not if you're not at that at that table to be able to communicate those stories, then how how will we know? How will we know what happened in 1619 and why that's so integral to the 1776 story? Yeah. How how do we how will we know that the 1776 story um, happened because of 1619 <laughs> and mm -hmm. the continuing narrative? So the most important piece of information is knowing that you are the you are the storyteller as much as you are the story. And you have the opportunity to be clarifying in the history of uh, the narrative, not just for black and brown people, but for the country as a whole. Okay. Um, so walk into that room, stake your claim and be prepared, always be prepared um, and smart about what you're doing, but know that you have a chance to not only tell the story, be the story, write the history um, as much as you convey the history. Uh, we also have public relations folks that are on the phone All right. uh, as well. And, and so these relationships that we need to build with journalists, can you speak um, to that at all about, you know, what, what is, how to, how to do that, how to really build the relationships? It is hard if you don't know reporters and if you don't know journalists um, for them to trust that what you're giving to them or what you're sharing with them is good stuff they're going to second, third source that to make sure. But if you've got a relationship with them where they know you're reliable, that your information is good, that, you know, yeah, they get the PR spend side of things and they know that's part of the business that you're in from a PR standpoint, but they also know that you're just not blowing smoke, then you've created a lane in which your information is going to be taken as reliable and serious more often than not. And people will actually come to you to verify the information they're getting because they know you're a reliable source. Thank you so much for being with us today. We truly appreciate you. Oh, my pleasure. Looking forward to next conversation. Okay. Thank you so much. Take All righty. All right.